up guys uh you know it's funny because I'm, I'm just now remembering i have put up a facebook post uh a few days ago where i said that i'm pretty much i'm done with mcdonald's i'm not gonna eat there anymore and uh i remembered that i had put that post up about 30 minutes ago right after I finished having a fish sandwich <laughs> meal uh, but yeah I'm, I'm upset at McDonald's because they had small fry for a dollar okay with tax has been a dollar seven for years and I've loved that about that you know about them just their dollar menu how cheap it is now the freaking fries are a dollar nineteen okay and that's not including tax I don't believe so I'm really upset about that because it's just like you know yeah I guess perhaps the economy is doing a, a bit better it's on the rise but why would you raise the price of your fries that's just like a stab to the heart like I'm, I'm depending on these dollar fries and you're making them a dollar 19 do you not make enough money like how like what else is gonna go up why don't we just go ahead and just raise the price of everything at McDonald's? Let, let's go ahead and just raise the price of every value menu. Let's let the Happy Meals be $5. Let's let the burgers now be $6 just for the burger. All right, I know I'm kind of going off a little bit, but I'm pretty, I feel pretty passionately about this. That's not, all right, that's not what this video is really about. Um, I just thought it was funny that... I remembered right as I was taking my last few bites <laughs> of those golden fries that I said I was done with McDonald's. But I'm so used to coming here, you know, after work today, it was just a no brainer. You know, uh, where do I want to eat? Where I always eat. But I really am, um, I bought a lot of raw, raw food. So I really do want to work on incorporating raw food in my diet daily carrots so I was eating a big fat carrot with my McDonald's meal and um, I got a cucumber I'm gonna work on an hour or so but uh, I have a crap load of, of carrots for a dollar fifty all right anyway I'm, I'm going off the subject again sorry life is just so exciting sometimes um, but, uh, I'm going to do another For the Chosen video, and I guess I want to entitle this one, um, God's Rest, and, uh, you know, to simply state, you know, God has, he has his place of rest for us. God has a place of rest for us. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's our job as believers to enter his place of rest daily so that the ultimate goal is that we enter his place of rest when all is said and done. And uh, just some scripture to back that up. You know, the funny thing is, after we've had a long day at work, a long week at work, uh, we want to relax. We want to have fun. You know, we want to do things that we feel will take our mind off the daily grind, off of daily issues, off of family issues, off of personal issues, whatever the case may be. And we do a lot of things that is contrary to the word of God in an effort to seek this peace, to seek this rest, to seek this, um, this relaxation, you know, and, um, and the funny thing is, those things that we go after to seek rest <clears throat> from everything that troubles our mind during the week, the, those things that we go after <laughs> actually put burdens and yokes on us spiritually. They, they're actually counterproductive in our spiritual walk and stagnate our, our relationship with the Lord. And uh, the thing is, like, the real rest in life comes from obeying God. And it, I mean, it, 
you know to say that no one wants to believe it it sounds boring it sounds unfulfilling but it's just the, the how the enemy has tricked all of our minds to think that oh what's fun and what's what's going to take you away is getting high is drinking like these things are going to take you away you know and these things are so easy for us to fall into sex and and um clubs and uh anything that that pleases the flesh that's contrary to the word of god pretty much which is everything that we love to go after it's everything that the songs promote that we love to listen to so all these things are entering our spirit and all this stuff uh and when i when i mean sex of course i mean premarital sex uh sex outside of marriage and um you know we run to all these things because we want to escape we want to you know we we want rest we just want rest there's so much strife and turmoil and injustices that's in the world um on our jobs we have to deal with so much crap from customers from co-workers from just the way that life is how things just aren't fair you know and uh and just the daily grind how hard things are you know and um we want we want rest but we again we go for things that do not give rest they they give the opposite of rest they give they actually like i said they give heavy burdens heavy yokes and it and sin produces death so each time we go towards these unnatural uh spiritually unnatural if that's that's true it's an oxymoron but you know what i'm saying each time we go towards these spiritually unnatural uh affections and perversions in life in an effort to seek some sort of rest each time one it draws us further from the lord two we're inviting more and more uh spirits that are that aren't of the lord into our lives and allowing them to run rampant So three ultimately it is burdening us. It's causing us this great burden. Um I guess an example of that is uh those of us who who like to smoke. Whether it's cigarettes, whether it's uh black and mild, whether it's weed, um you know you smoke but what's really happening you're killing your body and and smokers don't want to talk about it they don't they never want to admit to it they don't want to think about it but you kill yourself literally every time you smoke period that's just that's the bottom line period there is no way that smoking is healthy any type of smoking is healthy any type I've heard of people's lungs collapsing you know everyone says well you can't die from smoking weed I I've said it you know what I mean it's I guess statistically you know there's statistics that prove that but I know people whose lungs have collapsed from smoking weed and I know that smoke entering the body period is still destroying your your bodily cells it's still you know and whatever else it does to the body to the lungs to the brain to your memory cells you know everything that it kills it kills and then these negative habits if prolonged they lead to diseases you know it's just it's a killer you know so that's one example but the thing is you know I'll just stick to let's say weed you think about weed for those who are familiar with smoking weed um you want that sensation you want that high you want to just relax chill laugh be with people have a good time or whatever and you're thinking of this as rest but we think of this as rest but it's not rest for everything that it, that it actually ends up doing to us we already talked about some of the physical effects we could also look at spiritually you know uh and mentally a lot of time you know it makes you lazy a lot of people say you get real creative when you get high yeah but it makes you lazy you don't want to do anything you smoke a lot you smoke every day 
I mean, you know, it's hard to focus. Um, it's hard to progress, you know. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're doing that particular action, um, smoking makes you more emotionally sensitive. You might cry more. Um, you might become more sexually charged, come, become horny, whatever the case may be. It's a lot easier to watch porn and things of this nature when you're, when you're on, you know, when you're drunk. It's just like being drunk. People like to get drunk because they want to act silly or they want to relax or they want to chill, whatever the case may be. But what does these what do these things produce? You know, your mind is not thinking correctly. People drive when they're like this and end up killing people, end up killing themselves, end up, you know, having their licenses taken away. Never have I met so many young people with licenses taken away for drunk driving. Uh, than when I when I lived in South Florida, everyone I knew had their license suspended. You know, um, like what are these things really doing? They're not providing rest. God is the only drug that will get you high, literally, literally. I'm not even talking figuratively here, symbolically, metaphorically. Literally, He will get you high. He will get you feeling better than, and you don't have to be in church. And there's no side of there's no negative side effects, and it blesses you, and it adds to your to your spiritual future, in the here and now and in the future. I mean, he's perfect. It's just that we don't try him. And you know, I'll just go to a little bit of scripture. <clears throat> May I suggest the contemporary English version? It's the most awesome version ever. I realize. I mean, I read the Bible a lot. A lot of frustration comes from not getting into the right version. And now that there's technology and just that time is advancing, there's so many versions out now. May I suggest the contemporary English version? It is freaking amazing. I love it. It's the best version. It is the best version. All right, anyway. Hebrews 4. Verse 3 says, Only people who have faith will enter the, the place of rest. Only people who have faith will enter the place of rest. Now, you know, as I was saying, like, this is talking about heaven. But every single day we can enter God's... Before we get to heaven, we can have our heaven on earth before we get to heaven. Okay, every single day we can create, we can enter our place of rest. And our place of rest pretty much is just staying with, sticking with God. You know, He gives us rest. He says, uh, Christ says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So He means when you come to me to get your high, when you come to me to rest instead of going to everything else that you go to to get rest, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you waking up in the morning trying to figure out who's laying beside you I'm not gonna have you coming up off of your high being sober saying man Why did I just masturbate? Why did I just watch porn or whatever the case may be? Why did I just do whatever I just did man when I was under the influence? Why did I just? That's all we say when we're under the influence when we wake up the next day when you you know what I mean when you've gone off whatever the case may be because you're under the you're under the wrong influence and we've all been there I'm just speaking truth right now you know what I mean I'm just I'm just putting it out this is for me too you know but what happens is you know with Christians as you grow in the Lord and as you read about the Lord you just get these gifts he'll give you gifts and my gift is spiritual gab not just spiritual gab natural gab too but I have to use the gift he gave me you know and what happens is I look at the videos too as a reminder to keep me to help me you know make the right decisions because it's, it's, it's really hard you know even today it's a beautiful day out I just met up with some friends here at the McDonald's and it's like I want to hang out with them really bad <laughs> but um but before I met them 
God had laid it on my heart to do a video. And so I had I didn't know what I was gonna do it on yet. And so after I met them, I'm like, man, I wanna hang out with them. Then I get in the car and I'm looking on my phone at the uh at the Bible on my phone and it's talking about rest. And I'm like, why do I wanna hang out with them? Because I wanna rest and I wanna have fun. But this whole study is ministering to me at the same time. That's all I want to say. This is ministering to me too. So don't get hung up on that. Oh, well, Tia, you know, that, no, this is ministering to me too. And I'm not, I can't just not speak the truth simply because maybe I haven't yet arrived completely in certain areas. This, I mean, truth is truth. We got to live by it. We got to encourage each other and strive, you know, and that's why I'm doing the video. So anyway, just uh, for some reason I, I went ahead and said all that I really didn't have to but I guess it needed to be said for someone um, so it says only people who have faith will enter the place of rest and then it says Hebrews 4 6 Hebrews 4, 7. Much later, God told David to make the promise again. Just as I've already said, if you hear his voice today, don't be stubborn. You know, that's talking about God's rest. If God says, don't do, this is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to be under this type of influence. That's God's voice. If you hear it, this says if you hear God's voice today, don't be stubborn. So not just if you if you if you're listening to this video, but if you hear God speaking to you, don't be stubborn. You know, and if if we're not stubborn, we're entering into His rest. And what happens is, even though these things seem boring, they're so life fulfilling. I only have this power that I have right now where I can just talk and, and gab and, and know all this uh, godly wisdom because I've been applying it for years, for over a decade. I've been searching God, seeking God, reading His Word, being in His presence, doing all the boring stuff. But what it does is it gives you power. And you, your eyes start to open and you start to realize, you, can, you, you start to see the enemy's deception because the enemy deceives us he deceives us so easily because he knows what our flesh wants he knows what's gonna make us uh, moan and groan and be happy and laugh and and you know what I'm he knows what we like he knows what all of us like because all they do all the demons do is study us all the time they study us and study us and study us and, and tempt us and tempt us and tempt us and put this in our face and put this in our face but as you grow in God and as you start seeking God and seeking truth, you start to see your eyes start to become open. And then the test where I'm at now, like I know all this stuff, but yet the test is what do you do when it looks so good? It looks so fun. You know, that's the test is the application of the word. You know, there, there's, there's learning the word, and then you get all this knowledge. Wow, I love you, God. You're so awesome. Da, 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 da. You know? And then the test comes, and it's a whole different ball game. Because, see, what right now you're dealing with, what I'm telling you is all spirit talk. It's all spiritual. It's all the stuff we can't see. What we deal with is what we can see. And that's where the enemy comes in. Because he says, ah, I got your eyes, though. You can see. You know, I got your sight. You know, so since he can he can put something right in front of our face, that's, that's where it comes in at. Alright. So Hebrews 4 and 9 says, But God has promised us a Sabbath when we will rest, even though it has not yet come. So again. God has promised us a Sabbath when we will rest. So he's comparing right now the Sabbath, which is, you know, Saturday, 
or basically like the church day, he's comparing the Sabbath to one, to when God first created everything and he created everything in six days. And on the seventh day, he read, what I mean by created everything, you know, he created the sky, he created the, the sea, he created the heavens, he created the animals, he cre you know, he did all this, you know, he created the land, he did all this stuff, created the stars, and he creates everything in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. So the writer right now is comparing the Sabbath of God's rest to our six, our six days of work is basically our life on earth. These are our six days of work, our entire life on earth. And on that seventh day, is when we will be in our Sabbath with our with our Lord resting 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 from work in this sense I mean when we get to heaven we still will have responsibilities and duties it's gonna be awesome though we'll still have positions and everything but it's not work down here is fighting with the fighting with the enemy every day getting knocked down and, and tempted and swayed and pushed and this is work down here, right? And then we got to work to just, it's hard sometimes just to praise God or just to want to go to church, just to want to do the right thing, just to want to get together with Christians. It's all work. It's hard. But this, you know, these saying, but, you know, if we, the scripture is saying, on that day, God's people will rest from their work, just as God rested from his work. Right, so he rested on the seventh day. For him, it was a literal seventh day. I guess it would be days to us. For us, that seventh day, figuratively speaking, but still literally speaking, is the rapture. It's when Christ comes back. You know, it's when we go up to be with our Lord. And not just then, just period. Actually, actually, because... Even when the rapture comes, there's still going to be people left on the earth who will then have to suffer tremendously to be able to make it to heaven. So, that rest is just being with the Lord, period. When it's all said and done, when Satan is completely defeated, this, this earth is going to be torn down and, and, and rebuilt, transformed. And, uh... That's going to be our day of rest. So. I'm just going to end it here. Uh, I said a lot. It's probably going to be a pretty long video. It's going to take me a little while to upload it. But. Uh, I'm also now being listened to. By. The person that's beside me in this car. And I hate that. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video, but we're pretty much done anyway. I love y'all. Bye.